Hello and welcome to Geek It Plays Epic Landscape Tutorials. This is episode 11 entitled Green Fields and we're going to begin this tutorial by creating a fractal terrain. I'm going to stretch this terrain a tad and notice your main camera view to make sure you're covering everything you need to. Right click on your terrain and let's edit object. We're going to use zero edges. You see how that changes it. And let's go to mapping and edit filter and we'll put this down quite a bit. Click OK. Now we have a nice smooth flatter terrain. And let's go to paint and select the raise mode. Let's put it to maximum size, a little bit lower on the softness and the flow. And let's just increase the altitude right here so we don't have a large pit right here. And then we're going to add a couple of hills just in this area here. And let's add a little bit over here in this corner. There we go. And you can right click and drag and see how that's working out. Click OK. OK. Let's use our drop down button and make sure it's flat on the ground. And let's take our main camera and let's move it slightly closer. And let's put the camera a little bit down. And let's angle it up so that about one third of the screen is all we're seeing of the hills and the rest of the screen is the sky. Now let's go to our render options and render to screen and 640 by 480 and let's preview this and now we have a nice little terrain going on here and at this point let's go ahead and turn our attention to the sky so let's zoom out a little bit and let's right click on clouds and we're going to choose a heavy detailed cumulus okay we're just going to position this and rotate it a little bit. Okay, and let's drop it down to the ground a bit. Let's go ahead and preview this. And you can see we already have some nice, interesting looking clouds going right here. Another thing we want to do with the clouds is open it up by double clicking on it. And let's click on Cloud Settings. And we're going to increase the detail amount a little bit. Okay, and maybe just the cover a little bit. And we're going to just leave everything else at the default. Let's just double check the color and density. Okay, we're going to leave that the same. And the next step that we're going to do is go ahead and create a planet and set it in the background in this area. So let's click on our planet icon and zoom in on it and we're going to increase the size and put it down about something like this. Let's change the phase so that we can see the full planet and then increase the brightness all the way and turn down the softness all the way. So this is what we want it to look like maybe slightly down okay let's go to our atmosphere and let's load an atmosphere and we're going to use just a high altitude atmosphere as our base now let's go to atmosphere editor and in the atmosphere editor let's go to sun and we want to increase the corona a little bit Let's go to light and let's change the ambient light color. So edit color and we're going to change it to a dark blue. Click OK. Um, let's leave the rest of these settings at the default for now. Let's go to clouds and let's delete the clouds because we only want to have the cloud that we created. We don't want any other clouds. So in the sky let's go ahead and decrease the density and that will give us a darker look. Let's go ahead and drop the decay amount back so it will just change the color to a blue. And we just want to play with these settings and look in our main camera view 
and just kind of see which color is going to give us a nice crisper, cleaner look. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of haze. Let's see how that looks. And when we get closer to the final rendering, we'll look more at the haze. And same thing with the fog. Okay, let's go to wind and we'll disable the wind. And let's add some stars. Let's disable with lens flares. Let's decrease the number of stars and the brightness. And let's click OK. Let's click render. And let's preview what we've created. I think we've used nice settings to bring some interesting shapes out of these clouds. And I think it's looking pretty good now. So let's go ahead to our procedural terrain and double click to open the material. And make sure you're in the advanced material editor. And go to the color and alpha. And let's open and load a, um, a basic green plastic. And this will be our base, but we want to go ahead and edit the color. So let's right click here and edit color map. And we want to make it a darker green. So let's make it something like this. Okay, that's the first color. And double click on this and add another color. And we want to make a little bit more yellowish color, a little bit darker. So this is our two colors. Okay. Let's go to highlights and increase the intensity to 95 and the global size to dull. Edit the highlight color and change it to a yellow. Somewhere around here. Okay. Now let's go back to the color alpha tab. And let's right click and hit edit function. In here we just want to distribute the color a little bit differently. So let's delete the filter and the constant. And let's add a, a fractal node. And let's link our fractal node to our color. And let's decrease the largest feature and increase the roughness and gain. Okay. Let's go up here and click on the bump tab and let's link that to our fractal node. And then click on your link, add a connector, and then add a noise node and link that. And we're going to go ahead and decrease the scale almost all the way. So now on the bumps, what we have is a nice fine texture. Now also, let's go to the wavelength and maybe set the X to about 10. Okay. Let's go to bumps and let's put the depth to about 50. And we just want something seen, but we don't want it to be too obvious. Okay. When you look in your thumbnail over here, we'll have a wonderful, nice green lawn. Okay, let's zoom in a little bit closer and add a tree. And I'm going to use the Sunny Rishia tree. This is an additional tree you might purchase from Cornucopia, or you can also use a cherry tree or a roll maple tree, and that will look fine. We're going to place this tree, and I think maybe it's a little bit too big, so let's go ahead and shrink it down. Let's rotate it and see. Okay, that's good with it pointing a little bit towards the right there. And there we have our tree. Let's preview it. And you'll notice as it's rendering that it's going to take a little bit longer because we've set a high quality for the clouds. Um, if you don't set a high quality for the clouds, it causes um, pixelation. So let's just wait for that to render for a minute. Okay. And you notice right here we have a couple little problems. So let's go in and fix those. So let's go into our terrain editor. Whoops. Uh, wrong place. Right here. Okay and edit object and let's just increase the altitude right here a little bit okay 
Mm, that fixes that. And let's scale the it down to about uh, 9. Let's go into our atmosphere editor. Actually, before we do that, let's go ahead and click on our clouds. And let's add an ultra simple flat cloud. Let's move it a little bit closer and shrink it down. And we just want to position our clouds below the ground level so they're just popping up a little bit. And let's preview that in our thumbnail. And let's double click on the clouds and decrease the density and the opacity a little bit. We just want a nice light cloud there close to the ground. Okay, something like that. Maybe a little bit less, a little bit smaller. Okay, maybe a little bit less cover. Next, let's go to our atmosphere editor. And now's the time to kind of tinker around with our um, settings. Uh, for, with this guy, maybe you want to add a little bit more brown color with a decay amount and adjust that. Or, um, you know, watch your thumbnail and see what the different settings do and just play with a, re a little bit. You might want to increase the haze. Notice what that does. Maybe add a lighter sky. Personally, I like the darker sky a little bit better. Okay, and let's click OK, and I think the tree is still a little bit too big, so let's go and decrease the scale on that. That's, that's a little bit better. Okay, and I think we're ready to render our final rendering, so let's click Final and Render to Screen, and let's choose it 800 by 600 and then click OK. Actually, let's make it superior so we'll have a better quality. And let's render our work. And that one didn't take too long to render because we used the simple textures. Um, but now we have a wonderful wallpaper you can use on your desktop. And we left this field kind of open and you can add whatever you like. And I'd like to thank you for watching this tutorial by Geek at Play Studios. Won't you please come and visit us on the web at www.geekatplay.com and take the opportunity to post your work to the forum.